Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today I will give some instruction on the anomaly detection in infrequently occurred patterns. Uh, I'm Dong from the currently, uh, uh, I'm a principal architect from Baidu. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, before Baidu, I worked for the Bell Labs and Google for about uh, seven years at each company, uh, respectively. Okay, some background. Uh, Actually, I gave a uh, talk in last December in the Lisa uh, in the Boston. Uh, uh, that talk gave a high-level description on how, the, how we do the intelligence anomaly detection in Baidu's heterogeneously internet services. And after the talk, lots of people ask me, so what's the details uh, and how to do the, uh, what is the algorithm and what is the data come from, uh, and so on. So, this is so why we give a talk here. So today I will uh, give a detailed explanation to a case mentioned in that talk. So that means uh, uh, we should uh, come back to the title. So the in infrequently occurred patterns. Today I will take the holiday as an example. So how we, we all know the holiday is just a typical infrequently uh, traffic patterns. So this is the agenda. Uh, firstly, I will give a brief, brief introduction to Baidu, and uh, then uh, go, go to our uh, main topic. So what is the problem, and uh, what is our idea, uh, what the solution look like, and uh, finally give the results. Uh, okay, so give some introduction to Baidu. So Baidu is actually a Nasdaq listed company, and uh, we often called we, uh, we, uh, we are often called the Chinese Google. So the main service of Baidu is, uh, is search. Uh, besides the general search, we have lots of the vertical search, such as uh, image search, video, and uh, real-time news. Uh, also, other than search, we also provide other kind of the internet services in China market. Uh, for example, we have the location-based uh, services, uh, Baidu map is actually the, one of the most popular map services in China. And uh, we also have the social knowledge uh, services. Uh, in Chinese, we call the Tieba and the Zhidao, uh, so which, meaning, uh, which means uh, the uh, forum-like services and uh, question-answer services. Uh, we also have the O2O services, online to offline services. Uh, which just means uh, to connect the online user to some offline services, such as a uh, uh, restaurant, uh, the supermarket, or buying some ticket. And uh, Baidu also provides uh, finance and payment service in China. Uh, we have the uh, Baidu wallet. Uh, Baidu uh, is also one of the topest cloud computing provider in China. So we have the Baidu cloud. So totally, all kinds of uh, services provided by, uh, by Baidu covers more than one billion users in the world, for now. Uh, okay, let's go to the main topic of this talk. So, uh, anomaly detection. So what is anomaly detection? So I think the most of uh, us uh, in this room are SREs, so we have the common sense on this topic. So we launch a services, internet services, and we must uh, build or set up some monitor system to keep the eyes on uh, if the services is healthy. So the monitor system will generate a sequence of the data with the time, uh, and form the time sequence. So in, the, uh, in this picture, the blue lines uh, means the real value of, the, of the, uh, some services. And uh, there's other two lines. One is uh, original and uh, one is green. So that means some expected values, which means if the service is, is healthy, the traffic should like, uh, should like the other two lines, or either the, blue, uh, either the green line or orange lines. So the difference between them is a uh, different uh, generated algorithms of the expected values. We have lots of uh, uh, algorithm to, to generate the exact value. For example, the most, uh, uh, the simplest one maybe we just use yesterday's value as today's expect value. Or we can use uh, 
uh, the average of the last week's value as the expected value. So that is uh, pictures uh, looks like looks like. Uh, after uh, all this data are ready, we will keep our eyes on the gaps between the expected value and the real value. When the gaps suddenly becomes large, so we will know, so something, some bad things happens, the uncle gas will be busy. So this is a, a anomaly detection in theory. This sounds like not a very difficult problem, right? However, uh, let's just step out uh, any textbook or so go to and uh, come to the reality. Uh, this, this picture uh, is uh, actually copied from a uh, uh, real service of the Baidu. Uh, the time is uh, tricky. The time is around the Spring Festival. Uh, Spring Festival is actually the most important festival in China, just like the Christmas or New Year's uh, in the United States. Uh, people always uh, have the long vacation or l uh, long holidays. So the traffic becomes very abnormal. So you can see uh, the gap between the real value and the expected value becomes pretty large. So there's two kinds of result. If we do nothing, and we do, do not adjust the threshold or do not adjust the uh, algorithm to generate the expected value, then Uncle Gas will be bothered by the whole day's alert that definitely ruin his holidays. And uh, another way, the second way is uh, a common way we used before is just uh, adjust the threshold. Typically increase the threshold to just uh, pretend anything is uh, normal. So, uh, so the, but the risk of this method is during the holiday, if really some bad things happens, the increased uh, threshold will hidden this and will miss, uh, miss uh, uh, the, the, the bad things. So in such kind of situation, Either we, we will get loss of the missed alarm or we will get loss of the false alarm. Both of us are not our expected. Uh, so how to resolve this problem? Our idea is to uh, is try to adjust the expected value. Uh, this, this picture shows some uh, so some field ideas we, we, we tried uh, before the, the uh, real solution is, uh, uh, works. So we tried, the first tool is uh, the, the media composition and the timing, uh, timing composition. It's just the two variants of the armor, uh, uh, armor model. The armor model, which is uh, uh, one of the classical statistic based model. And uh, we also use the hot winter. It's another kind, uh, another the uh, it's called the double exponential smoothing model. So it's another kind of the statistic based model. Uh, we even use uh, the back propagation to try to uh, get the more uh, more exact values. The the pictures in the right side show some result. We can see we have some progress, but overall, all this statistic or traditional statistic based method don't resolve our problem. So after that, we're, we're, our idea is so can, can we try some data mining method? Or try some uh, just uh, bypass uh, the traditional statistic based method? OK. So. Uh, after we decided to try some uh, data mining method, uh, we, we just uh, see there's a lot of the difficulty for us. So I list uh, two main difficulties here. Uh, back to the topic of this talk. So we are trying to, to do some anomaly detection in the infrequently occurred patterns. So the infrequency means there's no enough data to training. To, to do training, right? So this is the first difficulties. We have no enough data. 
And the second uh, difficulty is uh, some chi uh, China-specific problems. In China, so most of our holidays are based on Chinese calendar, traditional Chinese calendar. So the result is the holiday date are not fixed. I have some example here. So uh, I list three, ma ma uh, three main holidays in China, the Spring Festival I just explained. Uh, and uh, Dragon Boat and uh, Mid Autumn. This is uh, the major uh, holidays in China. And I list their date in the last three years. You can see, in each year, they have the different dates. So what's the, what's the influence on such kind of uh, no non-fixed date? That means we even cannot use the seasonality of the time sequence to accurate some data. So this is uh, another difficulties. So uh, how to get data? So this is, a, this is a, uh, the first thing we need to resolve. Uh, so the, our idea is uh, uh, how about to try to find some, some dates which are not holiday, but they have the similar traffic patterns with holiday. So our method is to do some, uh, first thing is to do some clustering. Uh, clustering on what? Clustering on CDF of every day's traffic curve uh, use k-means. So uh, in the bottom, we, are, uh, we have some, some result in, uh, by the different case. Uh, in the picture, say the different color uh, means uh, different, different class, class result. Uh, based on our intuitive feeling, so I think the, the, the k equals 3 may be the best result. It's uh, just uh, clear borders between different clusters. So I can give some uh, quantitative uh, uh, explanation on this, uh, why this, uh, this selection is, is best. So we do clustering, uh, clustering on, the, on the data covers 310 days from the uh, March 1st, 2015 to the January 4th, uh, to the 2016. So covers, uh, uh, covers two years, almost in the one years. Actually, every date in a year has its uh, natural attribute. At least in the uh, in, in the le le left uh, left columns, see if the data is a working day, if the data is Saturday, if the data is Sunday, or if the data is a festival holidays, and the final column final uh, row is if the data is a special days. The special days means uh, means these days are actually not the official holidays. But they have the, the traffic pattern in these days are significantly different with the normal days. A typical example in China is November 11. So November 11 is uh, currently called the China's Black Friday. So the people will rush out to, to not, not, not really rush out, rush out to the online, uh, online market and purchase lots of things. So the traffic will become a significantly different. So we call it as a special days. So from this result, we can see the, uh, the basically the k equals 3. When k equals 3, the clustering result is uh, uh, pretty reasonable. So it's, uh, all the working days are clustered into the one class. And the uh, major Saturdays and uh, some of the Sundays are clustered uh, are classed into one category, and uh, all the other days uh, are divided into the final categories. So after have such kind of the result, we actually can construct a classification uh, model, use the natural attribute of the date to, class, uh, to classify every day in a year into any of these categories. Then when we do the 
to, to, when we try to design an algorithm to generate the expected value, we can reference, we can refer the similar days in the, in the same category. So we get some more data. It seems like the data problem has resolved. Uh, so we, we do some, uh, we do some, uh, some very, uh, very traditional data mining methods, is uh, logistic regression or something to do the expected value generation. And in lots of the days, we found another problem, just like this one. Here is a simple, uh, simple one. Uh, in the blue line is uh, uh, the, the, uh, the real value, and the green line is the expected value. So we, we can see the, the shape or chain of the, of the curve are, same, are similar, but we still have lots of the gap. So in such case, if we, we don't adjust the threshold, we still got lots of the false alarm. So what's the reason? After some uh, analysis, uh, the, the problem occurs uh, just because uh, just because I will, I will speed up. So just because uh, the clustering method we used, uh, we used. So we used the CDF. The CDF actually uh, just reflect the shape of the trend, shape of the curve, but not the exact values in, in, in the points. So uh, to the second idea to deal with these things is uh, we just do the real-time fixing. Uh, so what is the real-time fixing? The idea is it looks like this. Um, in the practical, we generate the expected value and get the real value points by points. So after, before generates the next, uh, next point value, these two values, we actually already know the real value and the expected value before these points. If, and we also can know if the real value a normal uh, or a normal. So we can base all these knowledges to adjust, to, to add on some fixing to the next, uh, to the next point's expect value generation. In, uh, in another word, so if the some value be just before this, uh, this, uh, this point are normal, so we can adjust the expect value more likely real value, more near to the real value. But if the, we already know the, the, the real value has been, has been anomaly, has found, found some bad things, we will adjust our ex expect value in the real time to make it, make it uh, just a little far away from the, the real value. So uh, as time limitation, I will uh, skip the, the formulas uh, uh, explanation, but uh, simply, uh, we use some window, time window based uh, method to do the real time fixing. If the points, real, real, real time points in this window are, no, uh, are all of the normal point, we use the first formula. Uh, if a part of the becomes a normal, we use the second. If the, all of the are normal, we use the third. And uh, we, this is uh, experimental result. Uh, we, we also list the previous result uh, here to do the comparison. So uh, in the left picture is, uh, is our result in this, uh, in this state. Uh, I will uh, explain the colors here. So the black color means the real-time value. The green color means the previous, very simple uh, method to generate the expected value. And the blue line means, uh, blue color means the uh, uh, expect value generated by our new method. So you can see the, uh, okay. you can see the method is not perfect, but uh, good enough to do the uh, normal detection. Okay, so this is a, a real, uh, final slide. So this is uh, uh, copied from a, a real service curve uh, in uh, one of the Baidu services. The time is generally uh, first this year, uh, the New Year's Day. So you can see our method, the blue line and the, the black line is almost duplicated here, but the green line is a, is a, is a pretty, pretty large gap. So uh, uh, 
I think the result is uh, uh, looks like very promising. Okay, so that's my talk to content. So any questions? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Can, can you use the mic? Doesn't making uh, future predictions conditional on past observations and the difference between what you expect and what you observe yeah. mean that you're, while you will find a sudden decrease in traffic correctly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you may be masking slight decreases in traffic, so an outage that is small but grows larger and larger as the divergence between your expectations and what's actually going on grows. Uh, so you mean, so, so if the, the traffic's uh, not the sudden, sudden, sudden drop, but the- If, if it slightly, slightly drops, sorry. then that divergence gets larger. Yeah, it's larger. another kind of uh, an uh, anomaly. We, 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 uh, we use another kind of method. So uh, this method, yes, you are, you are right. This method is, uh, is not so one, one for all method. Just for the very typical uh, uh, scenarios, so we use the, the, the sudden drop. The, the just the gap threshold based anomaly detection measure. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Mm. Hi, uh, Manoj from PayPal. So regarding the festival uh, related uh, thing, right, that you talked about, uh, that in the anomaly detection, you take care about the fe festivals, right? And uh, those are not fixed. So f you define them and, uh, and you feed that in, uh, in the anomaly de detection. But in the real time, how you are handling that? Uh, that uh, do you feed any kind of data that uh, in real time these are the festival dates to to capture the anomaly? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm sorry, I would, but I, I I can't see this. So fully so, understand your question. So, uh. so for the detection, right? So you have the uh, the festival and you have the fixed pattern of the dates, right? You, yeah. you, you show the the chart where you have the Saturdays, Sundays, and the festival days. So those are like you you determine ahead, right? What are the dates uh, for the festivals? In the real time, how do you do that? Uh, In the real time detection. I'm sorry, maybe we can, we can discuss it offline. So okay, I, sure, I, no problem. I have some difficulty to understand your question. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Uh, hi, thanks for the talk. So uh, just a very general question for folks in the room that might not be as familiar uh, with some of the statistical analysis methods you use against uh, time series. Um, is there any literature or resources you'd recommend uh, taking a look at to further deep dive into some of these topics? Uh, actually, it's a time sequence processing is a, is a very large area to do. To, 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 you, you can just uh, see, do some Google search, uh, you, you'll get lots of the literature on time sequence. But uh, about the time, uh, data mining is another, another big, big area, right? Cool. So well, maybe I'll find you after to talk more. OK, thank Thanks. you. Mm. Does your team in any way, based on your forecasting, have different monitoring parameters that you put in for a green day, a blue day, or a black day, so that the teams respond differently, or you use this predictive to change the actual alerting schema? Uh, no, no, not the different color, but different response. So the dif different color here means uh, the expect value and the real value. We just uh, consider the gap between the different colors. But we, we will do the different response between the, the, the gap size. OK. Sorry. Thanks. Mm. So that's all we have for questions right now. Uh, so let's give one more round of applause. OK, thank you.